morning to you ladies, my name is Jack Except the guy and uh, I just woke up. I'm literally just out of bed So I probably look like shit and I sound like shit, but that's fine because we got another thing going on You remember well, I don't know if you remember yet because I don't know if it's uploaded or not yet I did a thing with the ancestry kit you can get an ancestry kit where you spin into a tube, you seal it up and you send it back And then they tell you your genealogy or your whatever, they tell you your ancestry That's what the site's called, so I assume that that's what they do They're, They tell you where you're from, the kind of ethnicities you are, the cultures that you're part of, different things like that So, I sent that away, I've had that done for a couple of weeks now And they sent me emails saying they got it, but it takes ages and ages for it to come back So I haven't got that done yet, so I got another one from this company called 23 and me it was another one that I saw some people recommending that I thought would be really fun to do and this one came super quick this one came much faster it only came in the mail today so that's why I'm doing it now when I wake up before I have any breakfast because you're not allowed to eat anything for like 30 minutes before you do it um, and I kind of want to just get it out of the way now because we're gonna have to cut to something way later by the time this is done so I don't know which one will come quicker I don't know if doing this one now, if I get this in like a week or something, I have no idea But I'm very very curious to find out And the thing that made me want to do this one is because apparently this tells you your genetic traits as well So when this one will be complete it'll tell me my propensity for smoking, addiction, Alzheimer's, all those different types of things So that's fascinating to me, I want to see how prone I am to certain things like that So a more comprehensive overview is good, and plus I just want to do them because I think they're awesome, so I think it's the same deal again, no food or drink for 30 minutes Spit to fill line, close funnel, detach funnel, seal and bag, ship box Okay, seems pretty straightforward oh, This one's even fancier, this one just has a cap on it Oh Close funnel, detach funnel. Ah, okay, I get you. So this is the it has the fluids in here. The other one had a blue fluid. This one just has a clear liquid. Okay, here I go spitting again. Boy, that sure is delightful. <laughs> I won't be able to spit now for another twenty minutes. Whoa! Wait, what? Oh, the fill line is tiny. It was like spit to fill line, but the fill line starts like here and goes up to here. I you can't fucking see it. It's only like that much. I thought I had to fill the whole thing. Thank God. I'll be here all day, man. It's because when you spit, you you remove all the saliva from your mouth, and then when you have to do it again, it's like oh, well I have no saliva now. <laughs> Just give me time, Grayson. Grayson, my little boy, you're gonna treat me nicely, right? His fucking hair is dying. I don't know. You can't. Fucking see it, Grayson. There we go. His hair's dying. I think we're there. We sure are. Okay, in we go. Close this down. Mix with the saliva. Make a monster. Oh, it smells weird. Seal it tightly and shake, rattle and roll. I say shake, a rattle and roll. Okay, I think we're done. Seal the bag. A DNA Genotech Biospecimen Bag I feel like I'm fucking sending this to Raccoon City or something <laughs> I'm gonna start the, the apocalypse Okay, and back into the box you go And we seal up the box and send it away Boom jam! I really like this, I like the fact that everything is just like Get it, spit into it, close it up, send it back and You don't have to pay for anything either You just send it back and it's already prepaid Awesome! Okay, hopefully we get the results soon I'll see you there TRANSITION! The results are in! Can I get a drum roll please? <laughs> yes! One and all, welcome back! Do you remember this? Of course you do, because you're watching the same video. I barely remember this, because I put in... <laughs> Jesus Christ, I did this... Eight weeks ago? I did this like two months ago. I, I spat in the tube and sent it away and I thought Santa was just gonna deliver it back for Christmas. But it's finally back. It came back while I was at PAX. So now we can figure out how fucked up my lineage is. So let's get in and view this report. Um, right, so the thing about 23andMe, as I said before, was that this gives a more comprehensive look at your health. Instead of just where you came from, because as you can see here, ancestry composition 98.4% British and Irish 
So I don't know if we can actually break it down to see how how Irish I am versus how British I am. No, it just says British and Irish. So they're all lumped in together, which kind of sucks because they're different things, but that kind of goes with the other one. I was like 62% Irish and like 30, 20 something percent fucking moth. The window's open because it's warm and then you have lights on and then the moths come in. Moth, where are you from? What's your ancestry? No one cares, you're gonna die soon. Um, so that kind of goes in line with what we knew already. I'm- I'm pretty much from this area. It's like, oh, shocker. I'm white. And I'm European. <laughs> Who knew? Broadly Northwestern European. Where's that? Ah, Scandinavia. Which again, to be expected because Vikings, Scotland, Ireland, all that shit. Age-related macular degeneration. A variant detected not likely at increased risk. What does that mean? Genetic health risk tutorial. I don't fucking care! Just show me what it means! Age-related macular degeneration, AMD, is that what the processors stand for? Is the most common cause of irreversible vision loss among older adults. The disease results in damage to the central part of the retina, the macula, impairing vision needed for reading, driving, or even recognizing faces. This test concludes- includes the two most common variants associated with an increased risk of developing the condition. So is that just like, poor eyesight, or is this more serious than that? Macular degeneration, I think it's just like poorer eyesight as you get older. Which, I mean, I already have to wear glasses for stuff in the distance, because I've been looking at computer screens too long, and it fucked up my eyes. Hereditary hemochromatosis. Apparently I had something of this as well. Hereditary hemochromatosis is a genetic condition characterized by absorption of too much dietary iron. This may lead to iron overload, which can cause damage to the joints and certain organs such as the liver, skin, heart, and pancreas. This test includes the two most common variants linked to this condition. Oh. So, I'm... I'm, I'm not at increased risk of this, I just have some of this in me. As you can see, it's- I have variants of these things detected, but I'm not likely at increased risks. Risks. Right, let's get down into more stuff. Am I lactose intolerant? No, I'm likely tolerant to lactose, which is good because I, I like dairy. I like yogurts. I like milk. I like all those things. I forget what else is in fuck- Cheese! I love cheese! So if I wasn't able to eat it, that'd be bad. I'd be a smelly farty man. Um, so that's good. Saturated fat and weight likely to weigh more on a high saturated fat diet. Oh, shocker, most of humanity. Asparagus odor detection, likely can smell. Oh boy, does my pee smell after asparagus. I know everybody's does. Well, most people, apparently not everybody's does because it says, why would it be a test here otherwise? But my pee smells like two hours after eating asparagus. Like, have you- have any of you ever eaten asparagus and smelled asparagus pee? It's fucking nasty! It's pungent as all hell, but mine smells really quickly, so... Yes, accurate. Bitter taste. Likely can taste. Wait, what? I'm likely to taste bitter things. Need an excuse not to eat your broccoli? Vegetables like broccoli and Brussels sprouts contain certain bitter compounds that only some people can detect. Oh! I have heard about this with other things. I think cucumber's one of them. Some people eat cucumber and apparently it tastes really gross. And then others eat it like me, and it just tastes like water. Um, so it doesn't really taste like anything. And I love broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Hmm. Sean, you are likely to taste certain bitter compounds. 51% of customers who are genetically similar to you taste certain compounds as bitter. Huh. I don't know what that means. Does that mean I do taste it really bitter? The only thing that I taste really bitter that other people seem to be fine with is grapefruit. Whenever I eat grapefruit, it's so fucking sour. It's like eating a lemon to me. Sometimes it's worse, actually, than eating a lemon. And, and like with gin and tonics as well, some people think that they're delicious. And to me, it's kind of like that grapefruity taste. That it's just super bitter all of a sudden, so maybe that has something got to do with it. Maybe I just don't like certain things. Sweet taste likely prefer salty. You lying bastard. Which kinds of snacks are you most likely to crave? Sweet or salty? His preference is influenced by genetics. I way more prefer sweet things. I mean, I do like a salty snack every now and then. Sometimes I'm a salty little boy. But if it came down to it, I would way more prefer sweet things. And I blame my dad for that. My dad has this- My dad has the biggest sweet tooth I've ever seen in my life. And when, when sweet tooth and shit 
Irish dental care meet, it creates a cacophony of fucked up dentures. <laughs> Neanderthal ancestry. Fewer Neanderthal variants than 62% of customers. You hear that everyone? There's less Neanderthal in me than most of you. Ha ha! I ain't got a... Big head? Is that what they had? <laughs> hey, Late onset Alzheimer's disease. Zero variants detected. Sean, you do not have the E4 variant we tested. Alzheimer's disease characterized by memory loss, cognitive decline, and personality changes. Yeah, I think we all are familiar with Alzheimer's. Horrible disease. But that's kind of cool. Which is weird. Because I thought that that was a thing that was in my family, on my dad's side. Hmm. Parkinson's disease. Zero variants detected. Parkinson's disease is characterized by tremor, muscle stiffness, and problems with movement. Many factors, including genetics, can influence a person's chances of developing Parkinson's disease. This test includes two genetics, whatever. This is also very interesting because my dad was recently diagnosed with some, like, mild Parkinson's. He, he has issues with, like, muscle tremors and things like that with his hand shaking as he's gotten older. Because if you don't know, my dad is in his 80s. So my dad, my dad's pretty old. I, I have a pretty old dad. My, my parents got together when they were uh, younger and had me when they were much older. So, so that's interesting. That it's not in me. Hmm. That's very curious. Um, but yeah, my, my dad was diagnosed with it as well. So, th that's why that one kind of stuck out to me. I don't know. Um, maternal haplo group. Oh, this is weird. You descend from a long line of women that can be traced back to Eastern Africa over 150,000 years ago. These are the women of your maternal line, and your maternal haplo group sheds light on their story. Dude, that's cool! It shows where they migrated. So we started off 180,000 years ago, we started off down here in Africa. And then as time progressed, we went further into Africa. And then we went into the Sinai Peninsula. Oh, that's awesome! How accurate is this? It must be pretty accurate, right? I know, there's a lot of information here and I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, if you want to read some of it, you can pause the videos. I'm going to read through it myself at a later date. I want to hear some of the other things, like my health. They, but this stuff is really fascinating. Um, what else do we got? Paternal haplogroup, alpha-1, antitrypsin deficiency. Alcohol flush reaction, unlikely to flush. What the hell is that? Genetic factors help explain why some people flush red in the face after drinking a small amount of alcohol, one drink or less. People who experience flushing may also experience unpleasant symptoms like headaches, nausea, and sleepiness. Unlikely to flush after drinking alcohol. Ah, oh, that is a thing! I remember when I went to Korea, there was a lot of people that suffered from that. I don't- not to sound insensitive or slightly racist. I don't know if it's actually a thing that Asian people are more predisposed to. I have heard that. Mark actually said that to me as well, because he is Asian um, genetics. So I, I don't know if that's actually a thing. I'd, I'd actually be very curious. That's that's something that this would help with as well. If you had more... Oh, I, I wonder if it actually talks about that. Yeah, Eastern Asia, 43%. Oh, that's fascinating! Scientists believe that the variant in this report first appeared in ancient China due to a random genetic mutation and spread to neighboring regions as people migrated. It's very rare for people who don't have East Asian ancestry to carry the variant, though it does happen. For example, some Iranian individuals have the alcohol flush variant, possibly because millennia ago, traders traveling along the Silk Road brought the variant from China to the Middle East. So I wasn't being racist or insensitive. It's actually a thing. Oh, this is cool. This is why I like this one better than Ancestry. We learn- well, I learn stuff way beyond just You're Irish. <laughs> Hair curliness. Likely straight or wavy. Well, I guess we know which one it is. <laughs> freckles. Likely little fre freckle freckling. I actually did have way more freckles on my face here when I was younger. Uh, but they kind of disappeared as I got older, but I still have like freckles all over me. Um, but just not like the mad freckles, uh, like redheaded people would get. Finger length ratio, likely ring finger longer. 
That is a lie. These are my ring fingers. Wait, longer than what? The, the rest are longer than my index, because they're definitely longer than my index. Eye color, likely lighter eyes. Flash them baby blues. Earwax type, likely wet earwax. I guess that is true. I do have wetter earwax. Um, but I thought it was just because I have headphones on a lot and I listen to games and movies and shit like that and editing videos, so... I don't know. Earlobe type, likely detached earlobes. Hell yeah, though I tried to get rid of them. <laughs> I didn't. I just got them pierced. Cleft chin. Likely no cleft chin. Likely no dimples. Likely no ball spot. Haha! <laughs> I have no ball spots. Ooh, sleep movement. Genetic factors influence how often people move their arms and legs while they're sleeping. Well, I'd have to sleep first, but yeah. I, I do do that. I do move a lot in my sleep. So much so that when I wake up the next day, I'm sore because... I, like, have moved into an uncomfortable position, I'm, like, upside down when I wake up. Several studies have shown that a genetic variant is associated with how much people move their arms and, like, I'm up here? Oh, shit. Likely to- likely to move more than average. Oh, man, I'm a double-A battery in that regard. Oh, God. What else can influence sleep movement? Age, in general, older people experience more sleep movements than younger people. Hey! What are you trying to say? I'm not old! On average, men experience more sleep movements than women. Hey! What are you trying to say? I guess that's true. Alcohol. In one study, consuming two or more alcoholic drinks per day was associated with more sleep movements. What if thought it would be less? Though maybe it's if- maybe it stacks when you drink more. Because I always feel like if I'm- if I'm tipsy or if I've ever been drunk, when I go to bed, it's just- I like, passed out. I might as well be dead. Um, that's cool. Shocking no one that I move a lot in my sleep. I move a lot in my wake as well. Here we have muscle composition. Sprinters and endurance athletes differ in the composition and the capabilities of their muscles. These differences can be influenced by both training decisions and genetic factors. Sean, your genetic muscle composition is common in elite power athletes. Hey! I got to the Olympics, y'all! Fuck! I have power athlete muscles. Shame I'm not doing anything with them. <laughs> I'm just sitting here recording Let's Plays all the time. Man, I really should train them more, because then I could be a fucking power athlete. Ugh. Studies have found that almost all elite power athletes, including sprinters, throwers, and jumpers, have a specific genetic variant in a gene. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, this is a good one. The caffeine consumption. Sean, based on your genetics, you are likely to drink more caffeine than average if you drink caffeine at all. <laughs> I had a, my third cup of coffee before recording this, and this is not a cup. This is a bowl of coffee. <laughs> That's a good one. 23 and me research participants with your genetic result who consume caffeine regularly tend to drink the equivalent of about a quarter of a cup of coffee more than average per day. Of course, not everyone chooses to consume caffeine, but for those who do, their genetics may play a role in the amount they consume. Yeah, I, I drink a lot of coffee. It's no secret. Um, mainly because I love the taste of it. I never ever drink coffee to wake up because drinking coffee doesn't actually do anything for me in that regard. The caffeine in it I might have drank too much, but it doesn't perk me up, and if it does, it's a very indistinguishable amount. So I just drink it for the taste, because it's delicious. Um... How does caffeine keep you awake? Caffeine interferes with the brain system that causes sleepiness. A molecule called adenosine acts as a signal between- Oh! I saw a video about that! Oh, it's called TED something. Like the TED Talks, but it's like TED Ed. Or something like that. The really good videos where it tells you how caffeine works. Because normally, the sleep- like cells go into receptors in your brain that lock in and when they lock in you start feeling drowsy But caffeine is like the perfect size that it fits right in the slot like this Fits right in the slot where the sleepy ones would go so when you drink it then they fill that up So you don't get as drowsy anymore. It's not that it perks you up. It just makes you feel less sleepy That kind of thing. I actually learned a thing and then if you drink too much caffeine then it ends up Overloading your system because your body starts creating more receptors for that For the sleepy things to come in so they can overpower it again And then you have to drink more coffee to balance out that so you end up overdosing on caffeine you, It's not like it kills you or anything caffeine is very safe to drink, but It's it's fun. It's interesting. I like that How does caffeine enhance performance? 
It can feel like caffeine makes you smarter, but some research suggests this may be an illusion. People with a daily caffeine habit may actually perform worse than other people on mental and physical tasks, that is, until they get their morning fix. As caffeine is cleared from the body overnight, daily caffeine drinkers start to experience caffeine withdrawal. This leads to worse performance until they have their morning coffee or tea, which reverses the withdrawal, meaning, meanwhile, for people who aren't used to consuming caffeine every day, caffeine may not improve performance much, if at all. And that's why you start getting headaches after you stop drinking coffee. If you drink a lot of coffee and then you go cold turkey, you start getting headaches because I think it has got to do with the receptors and signals and all that stuff. Um, it's just cool. I'll try and remember if I can find out what that video is. Just look up... Fuck. There it is. How does caffeine keep us awake? By Hanan Kasim. Uh, Ted Ed. Yeah, I was right. Go watch that video. It's fucking cool. But anyway, I'm gonna leave this video here. There's a lot more in this, and there's a lot more that I could be reading. I could be going through all of these things. But I kind of just honed in on the ones that I thought were interesting, and ones that I didn't know. So there's a lot of stuff like the baldness, and the... The earlobes and that, that I'm not going to go in and read every single little thing. I will in my own time, but just not for a video because I, I don't feel like it's it's really adding anything. But I, I like this one. This is a good one to end on. <laughs> um, very cool. I like 23andMe a lot more than Ancestry. Not sponsored by them or anything. I just wanted to do them because I'm fascinated by these DNA tests and fascinated by where I come from and what I can do. And I, I don't know how accurate all of this stuff is. Oh my god, there's so much shit. Usher syndrome. Is that where I go around just yelling yeah at everything? I, I don't know how super accurate any of this stuff is because I, I haven't done any research on like how they get to these results or haven't looked up how their labs work or anything like that. Um, I'm just I'm just curious to see if this is like likely prefer salty. That kind of one, if that's actually true, if I just don't know that about myself or something, if the test knows more than I do, I have no idea, but it's fascinating to just read through it yourself. Anyway, I suggest all of you go out there and do one of these tests if you can. They're not free, so I understand if not everyone's gonna do it. They do take a really long time though, and I don't know if it's because of where I live or because my DNA was so messed up that they were like, oh, we can't fix this out, but you know what? I got loyalty, got royalty inside my DNA. Cocaine quarter piece got war and peace inside my DNA. It's a little Kendrick for you. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face. Like your boss. And I buy the rap. Whoosh, whoosh. Thank you guys, and we'll see all you dudes. I got power, poison, pain, and joy inside my DNA. I got hustle, though, ambition, flow inside my DNA. I can't remember.